So here we have our trimmed piece and a rock. What's the rock for? Wouldn't you like to know? Um, if you look at some of the books on how to form leather, a lot of the time they'll take like a wood block form and then they'll just nail a whole bunch of this perimeter, right? This extra stuff, they'll just nail it to a board around a surface, okay? And so if my arm was an orb, that would work great, um, but it's not. So all this extra that we left on, we could use to hammer down into a surface, like a wood block, to make sure that this armor piece had the exact contour of my rock, so I knew it was gonna fit my shoulder exactly. Um, but since we're not worried about that because my arm is not this rock, we're gonna use the rock, which is a very good um, sort of contoured replica of what my shoulder looks like. So we can do one over here, like so. We're going to make sure that we trim our perimeter out with the scissors. And then we're going to wrap it around the rock as, as a form to guide our material, right? So if you remember several videos ago, we put this thing under a flat block to make it flat so we could do all of the drawing and the stippling and the uh, engraving. Um, now we're just, while the leather's soft, taking the time to casually trim this out. I think if you remember the bracer, this beast, super stiff. Wet leather, way easier to cut. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not struggling. I can actually talk coherently during the video as I'm doing some pretty complex curves. And just so you know, a concave curve, that's this U shape. A convex curve is this one. Um, the concave, super hard to do with scissors and leather. Worse when it's dry, better when it's wet. So when you're doing your trim step, it's always nice to know that, oh, if I get it a little wetter, my leather is gonna be more compliant and I can do my shaping. Um, but usually I'll wait to do my trim step until after I've done my carving and embossing because sometimes you're like way off on the border and your scissors just sort of clean that up. Um, if you've taken my class before, you've heard me say like a bajillion times, uh, you can always cut it shorter, but you can never cut it longer. Uh, truth is, when it comes to leather, you, yeah, you can never cut it longer. There are glues, but they will never make it look the way it once was before you trim that section off. So when you're using these scissors, you know, you want to be very zen, you want to commit to it, but, uh, you know, be patient. Don't try and rush it. No forcing it. It's just, it's just art. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of videos where after the trim step, they do this burnishing step. They sit and they take, uh, people will take just a general object. Sometimes they have like a power tool with like a steel wheel, or they'll take, you know, something like this agate burnisher and spend hours rolling along the edge. And again, you can, it's a very nice finish, but ultimately the question is, are you gonna have fun in your armor or are you just trying to hang this up on your wall to um, just sort of be on display? I'm one of those people who all my tools get used and when they start to rust or um, show signs of neglect, I either give them to someone who will use them or get back to using them. So. I prefer not to worry about the edges of the armor. And one more thing, um, during my day job, when I'm doing the complex stuff, uh, a lot of the time we use CNC control systems and you get machining. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's perfect. But when you're human, um, you really wanna take into account that these little details show that you took the time to craft this with your hand. And I can tell you right now, robots, they can't carve leather. They can't cut rubbers. They can't do anything flexible. And because we're human, a lot of us are very flexible and really good at accommodating these curves and these concepts. So you should embrace that about yourself. And when you make a small mistake on this design, just know if it was stamped out by a machine a thousand times over, it would never be contoured exactly to your body. 
So that's a good thing. All right, so we've got our piece that's cut out. Looks like a kind of shield arrowhead sort of shape. And we're gonna stick it on, I think we're deciding the left one's the way to go. We're gonna stick it on there and make sure that we kind of understand what our orientation is so that the, we want the point to be in line with our arm and then the, the top of the shield to be above the, the tricep. And just make sure we have kind of a good concept of a grip there. And that the center of the mass, for what it feels like to me, is actually the, the circle of my logo. So, we're going to take our rock and pretend it is the shoulder. We're going to line it up as best we can for center. And um, you could get super hung up on this, but we're going to put rubber bands on it. So, it's a bit of guesstimating. Meaning that you're going to try it on and it's okay if you have to re-wet it and reform it to make sure that it's what you want. But just know when you're wearing it, you're going to want it to fit really well and be very comfortable. So taking time now to make sure that it does what it's supposed to is more important than rushing through it. Um, and one thing to be aware of, your leather is wet, so it's going to take any impression of whatever's touching it. So generally, if you're not trying to crimp it in these uh, tight ridge lines, you need to either A, take the time to make sure your rubber band is distributed uniformly like this, or B, stick something between it that is as soft as the leather so that you're not cutting into it and you don't end up with some sort of band going straight across all that hard work you did. Um, especially if you were just embossing, you'll be like, oh man, now I have tiger striping right across my dragon face. I have a Z dragon, Z dragon, whatever you want to call it. Um, so this is sort of wrapped. You can see on the back it fits. I'm not really satisfied with this edge, so I'm going to try to adjust my rock just a little bit. Wiggle, wiggle. Making sure that we have this edge sort of at the same side. And that involves opening this up and rotating my rock and then also sliding the rubber bands forward. And so this is one of those processes where you're like, wow, there's, there's really no science to it. If you look at cobblers, they have these great shoe forms. They just have hundreds and hundreds of shoe forms, which is why shoes are so expensive when they're not just produced in a manufacturing factory. Um, when you have a cobbler shop, they're making sure everything fits to you to the best of their ability, but that means they have to have a lot of forms. So as we do this leather working, you can imagine this being a shoe, or you can imagine this being armor. You want this to fit, have a nice taper. And you can see here, we're girdling it in, we're bringing it in a little tight. So if that's not a look I want, I would do some detail to the front, to sort of flare it back out. Or in this case, we're just gonna move the rubber band lower. Oh. so that we don't get that premature girdling of our geometry. And when I say geometry, I mean we have this shape. It's not round, it's not square. It's sort of pointy-ish, and we just want to have like a continual flow here. So things you can do after that. I love scrap leather for this. This is called shimming. You can take little strips, and you can use that everyone can see here to squeeze between the leather and the rock to give you closer to the form you're looking for so we just take a couple little strips and pack it out so when it does go to encapsulate the arm it's sort of the the shape you imagined and then to prevent my rubber bands from doing rubber bandy things to my leather that over just slide that right under the rubber band okay yes this is a little excessive but at the same time if you spent that much carving do you really want to find out that you should have put a strip in after the fact because it's going to be much harder to get that back out so 
I always try to prevent dents from happening when I'm doing the lazy step of just waiting for material to dry out. Put that under there. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. Alright, so now we have our pauldron form. Pretty good geometry. It's going to fit the arm well. And now, the question is, do you want to do anything fancy with these? Do you want a crease here? Do you want a, a flare there? What sort of shape, what sort of contouring are you imagining in your mind? Because I assume it's not just going to fold over and look like, I don't know, like a, a taco hit the ground, soft taco crumbling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet these portions and start adding some final contours to those as well. So when you're forming leather, you can fold it, you can crease it, you can shape it. Generally when I'm doing that, I make sure that I've cut my nails so I'm not gouging into these surfaces because I do want my uh, armor to have some sort of smooth factors and some sort of textural elements, some parts to it that are shiny and dull bright and dark. Gives you a better sense of contrast in the design. So the thicker the leather, the harder it is to fold. But the thicker the leather, the harder it is to unfold once you've created the crease. So just take your time and work one corner to the next, like so. And it's amazing, as you start to fold these over, you'll realize this kind of floppy, goofy curve that I started out with, where I wasn't too um, focused on getting it clearly defined, starts to turn into a fairly sharp shape because of the way um, the material is folding over. So it's something to be aware of, is when you have these nice, loose forms in the beginning, they get sharper and sharper as you start to add more curves to them, and that geometry changes. So... Um, dull, dull corners will actually look much harder once you give them a volume uh, beyond just flat. Right, so there we are. We've got some shaping there. And then one more thing. I've worn enough of these to know that this, this sort of spear-shaped taco edge is going to stab me. So I'm going to wet that and just give it a little swoop so it sticks out. And it's going to snag on everything you wear. That's fine, because it's not going to snag on your skin. Okay. You don't want to wear a hole in your shirt. You don't want to find out that you've stabbed yourself with your own armor. That's just bad design. 